Our objective for this lesson is to find the domain and range of inverse function. Prerequisite knowledge needed for this lesson are solving inverse of a function, graphing inverse function, vertical and horizontal asymptotes, and domain and range. Please find time to watch these videos to fully comprehend our lesson for today. Let's have a review first. Given the graph of a one-to-one -one function, the graph of its inverse can be obtained by reflecting the graph about the line y is equal to x. And to get the x and y values of an inverse function, interchange the x and y values of the original one-to-one -one function. Domain and range of inverse function. The domain of f is the range of f inverse. And the range of f is the domain of f inverse. All functions have inverses, but sometimes the inverse is just a relation. So, to make sure that the inverse is also a function, sometimes we need to restrict the domain of the original function to make it a one-to-one -one function so that its inverse is also a function. Let's have a quick review on domain and range. Domain is the set of all possible values for x while range is the set of all resulting values of y. There are several ways on how we could write domain and range. First one is through roster method. This is listing or enumerating all the values. It uses braces. Here are the examples. Next one is interval notation. It uses parentheses and brackets. Here are the examples. And the third one is set builder notation. It uses braces and a vertical line. Here are examples. This is read as x is an element of real number such that x is less than negative 1. Others write in this manner. x such that x is an element of real number where x is less than negative 1. Either of the two is correct. Find the domain and range of the function in its inverse. Let's start with the easiest one. Given a table of values. For the domain, simply enumerate the values of x, separated by comma, and enclosed by braces. Do the same thing for the range, but this time, the values of y. Now let us plot these points. So we have 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 8. Now for the inverse, we just have to interchange the values of x and y. So let's do it. This time, the domain is 1, 2, 4, and 8. And the range is 0, 1, 2, and 3. Notice that the domain of the original function is the range of its inverse. And the range of the original function is the domain of its inverse. Now let us plot these points. So we have 1, 0, 2, 1, 4, 2, and 8, 3. To make sure that these points are inverses of one another, let us draw our line y is equal to x. So when we fold our Cartesian plane on this line, these points will coincide one another. Next example, f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. This is a polynomial function, therefore the domain and range of this is the set of all real numbers. Here is another way of writing domain and range. This is what you call interval notation. Now for the inverse, you may follow the four-step procedure or the shortcut method I discussed in my previous video. So the inverse of 2x plus 1 is x minus 1 all over 2. This is a rational function with constant denominator. Therefore, the domain and range of this is also the set of all real numbers. Now let us graph. The graph of 2x plus 1 is this one and the graph of x minus 1 all over 2 is this one. To test whether they are inverses of one another, let's have our line y is equal to x. Notice that this lower portion is a reflection of the upper portion of the graph. So they are inverses of one another. Let's have another one. g of x is equal to the square root of x plus 5. This is a radical function, so we're going to set our radicand greater than or equal to 0. Solving for x, this will be x is greater than or equal to negative 5. This will now be our 
domain. Here's another way of writing the domain using set builder notation. Now let us graph this. So from this graph, you will notice that the domain is from negative 5 going to positive infinity, or x is greater than or equal to negative 5. For the range, let us look at our y-axis. So we started seeing a graph here is slowly going up, so to positive infinity, or y is greater than or equal to 0. Now for the inverse, the inverse of the square root of x plus 5 is x squared minus 5. And this is a quadratic function. The domain of a quadratic function is the set of all real numbers. But we cannot consider that because that will make our inverse not a one-to-one -one function. So we're going to restrict our domain to x greater than or equal to zero now to get the domain let us get the range of our original function so we have x is an element of real number such that x is greater than or equal to zero now for the range let us get the domain of our original function so we have y is an element of real numbers such that y is greater than or equal to negative five now let us graph this to test whether they are inverses of one another, let us have our line y is equal to x. And you will see that this portion of the graph is a reflection on the upper portion. So they are inverses of one another. Let's have another one. h of x is equal to x squared minus 4. Here is the graph. This is a function but not one-to-one -one because this will fail the horizontal line test. Right now, the domain of this is from negative infinity to positive infinity. To make this a one-to-one -one function, I will have to restrict my domain. So either I'll choose the left side or the right side. So let me choose the right side. So that will be from zero to positive infinity or x greater than or equal to zero. This will now be my graph. This is a function and this is one-to-one. -one. So this is now my domain from zero to positive infinity. And for the range, you will notice from the graph, it started at negative four, then going up. So from negative four to positive infinity. This point is included. That's why I make use of bracket. Now for the inverse, the inverse of this is a square root of x plus 4 a radical function so let us set the radicand greater than or equal to 0 solving for x this will be x is greater than or equal to negative 4 so this will now be my domain for the inverse from negative 4 going to the right so negative 4 to positive infinity notice that this domain is actually the range of my original function now for the range of my inverse function that will be the domain of my original function so from 0 to positive infinity now let me graph this one and let me use my line y is equal to x you will notice that when the Cartesian plane is folded along this line, this portion of the graph will coincide with the upper portion. So they are indeed inverses of one another. Another one, t of x is equal to x minus 3 all over 2, a rational function with constant denominator. Therefore, the domain and range of this is the set of all real numbers. The inverse of this is 2x plus 3, a polynomial function. Hence, the domain and range is also the set of all real numbers. Now, let us graph x minus 3 all over 2 and 2x plus 3. Let's have our line y is equal to x. So when we fold our Cartesian plane along this line, this portion of the graph will coincide with the upper portion. So they are inverses of one another. Let us have one more. P of x is equal to x minus 3 all over x plus 2. So this is another rational function, but this time we have a variable in the denominator. So we're going to solve for the value of x that will make our denominator 0. And that is the value that we are going to exclude from our domain. So x plus 2 equals 0, x equals negative 2.
Therefore, our domain is the set of all real numbers except negative 2. Now, for the range, let us examine the exponents of numerator and denominator. Both are raised to the first power, so let us examine the coefficient. So, the coefficient of numerator is 1, of the denominator is also 1. So, 1 divided by 1 is 1. That is our horizontal asymptote. That is the value that we are going to exclude from our range. Therefore, our range is the set of all real numbers except positive 1. Now, for the inverse, the inverse of this is 2x plus 3 all over 1 minus x. So, another rational function. Let us equate this to 0. So, 1 minus x equals 0. Therefore, x is equal to 1. So, we are going to accept 1 in our domain. So, the domain will be the set of all real numbers except 1. Notice that our domain in our inverse function is the range of our original function. For the range, that will be the domain of our original function. We're just going to replace x with y because we are talking of range. Now, let us graph this one and this one. Now, our line y is equal to x. And notice that this is a reflection of the graph on the other side. This time, given a graph, let's determine its domain and range as well as the domain and range of its inverse. So the graph is started at negative 4 and ends at positive 4. Negative 4 included, positive 4 not included. So we have domain negative 4 to 4, included, not included. For the range, let us look at the y-axis. So the graph is started at positive 2 and ends at positive 6. Included, not included. So we have from 2 to 6. Now for the inverse, the domain of the inverse is the range of the original graph. So we have the domain of the inverse is from 2 to 6, while the range is the domain of the original graph, negative 4 to 4. Let us graph now the inverse. This is point negative 4, 2. The inverse of that is 2, negative 4. This one is 4, 6. So the inverse of that is 6, 4. Now let us connect this and let's make use of our line y is equal to x. So you will notice that they are reflection of one another along this line, so they are inverses of one another. Some quick tips. The domain of the function is the range of its inverse, and the range of the function is the domain of its inverse. If the given function is not one-to-one, -one, Restrict its domain to make it one-to-one -one so that its inverse is also a function. And the graphs of a function and its inverse are symmetrical to the line y is equal to x. Now, let us check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. <laughs> Here are the answers. For the domain, first we have to set this to greater than or equal to 0. So solving for x, x is less than or equal to 3. And for the range, that would be y is greater than or equal to 0. Now the inverse of square root of 3 minus x is 3 minus x squared. The domain of the inverse is the range of the original function. And the range of the inverse is the domain of the original function. Number two, so the domain is from negative 6 to positive 2, not included and included. For the range, that is from negative 4 to 0. The domain of the inverse is the range of the original function, and the range of the inverse is the domain of the original function. Gets?